What's up video creator, it's videomark.net again. Today we're going to be looking at essential pan and zoom techniques within Premiere Pro. How to create fake camera movement to spice up your footage to, to create some interesting uh, movement to maybe static shots or aerial shots um, where that movement is not present and it's maybe too boring or you want to emphasize a certain area of your uh, of your, your footage. This is a pretty common technique, also referred to as uh, the Ken Burns effect, which was a camera operator who has um, been using this a lot. I'm not really familiar with the history of this, um, if he invented this or not. If you know that, <laughs> feel free to put it into, into the comments. But this is mostly being referred to as the Ken Burns effect. It's actually pretty simple uh, to create within Premiere Pro, so let's take a look. So before we, get, before we get started, if you want to follow along, I've uh, used a couple of clips from Envato Elements. If you want to follow along, go ahead and uh, download these clips. I'll provide the links in the description. And it's a very, it's a, it's a great resource for th these types of stock footage. Of course, I don't have a perfect case for every scenario, pan and zoom, tracking zoom, rotation zoom. So um, it was a great resource to, to download these clips from. And uh, let's get started with the basic two movements, the pan and, and zoom. So we've, we've got the shot here. And when I play this, as you can see, there's this um, incredible sunrise in, I think it's Miami. And um, let's say we have this static camera here and it's, it's looking too boring. We want to emphasize a little bit. We want to follow along uh, the sun, the sun rising here. So what we can do when we clip on, uh, when we click on that clip and go to the effect controls and most of what we do will happen in this motion in these within this motion setting so twirl that open and you're going to see pos position and scale if you're familiar with these settings you can skip this section and if you're just getting started with uh, premiere pro let me explain what this stopwatch does is it actually just enables the automatic keyframing the auto keyframing. So when you click this, it is setting a keyframe already. So beginners might think, okay, that's how I set a keyframe. No, you just enable the auto keyframing. To actually set a keyframe, you have this um, little icon right here. So when I move over the, the playhead a little bit and click on that, um, that will set a keyframe. When you see this green stop, uh, this blue stopwatch, it means um, the auto keyframing is enabled. And when I click this, it's gonna ask me, Oh, do you really want to disable the auto keyframing? And I say, okay, and the keyframes are gone. Okay, so that's a little misleading, I know, but for beginners, this will just enable the auto keyframing and set the very first keyframe at playhead position, okay? So that being said, when we now uh, want to follow this and create a pan, we will uh, scale this since this whole thing, when I click on this motion here, you're gonna see these, uh, these transform uh, handles here. And it's filling up the canvas just perfectly. We don't have any extra real estate to work with. So we're going to scale it a little bit up just so we can move this, move things around a little bit. And we're not going to animate the scale just yet. So from, from my experience, it's safe to scale up to 120% for like MP4 footage. If you have raw footage, you can go further than that. If you have 4K footage, of course, you can go further than that. A good rule of thumb is maybe 120%, okay, without losing too much quality. So now what we can do, we can actually, as we're going to follow this sun movement, we want to pan from left to right, okay? So we're gonna nudge this over just a little bit until we see the left edge of the footage, just so it fills up the, the canvas and we don't have this black, uh, black area. And now enable, as explained earlier, enable the auto keyframing, then move over a little bit, and then move it all the way to the left until we um, see the, the end of the footage, okay? And then extend this to, to cover the whole clip. And now when we play this, it's like the camera is just slightly, ever so slightly, not it's subtle movement, but it adds a little bit to the static shot that it was before. It's just a little more pleasing to the eye when you just, when you follow. I mean, the sun is very present in this shot, but still it is as if the camera operator had followed had panned with the camera and followed the sun a little bit, okay? So that's the very first essential technique that you should use when creating pan and zooms manually. There's a couple of plugins out there 
and I'm going and I'm going to show you um, a little trick, a little pro trick, where you don't even touch these effect controls and create the same effect later in this video with an additional effect. But for now, we're going to create these within the motion section of the effect controls. So this is the the, the pan. Now let's take a look at the zoom. For that, we have another shot here. And uh, this is also referred to as a dolly shot because this is as if the camera was moving on tracks and closing in on the subject. So we have this cute doggy here. And as you can see, maybe you notice that this actually is stitched together. It's reversed right here and back because probably it's not, I don't know what why they did that. Maybe it's not long enough, I don't know. But clearly, um, if this was, if the camera was moving, the camera would go back and forth, okay? That's not going to work. So maybe that's the reason why they had this uh, static camera. And what we want to do here, we just want to move, move in. We want to zoom in ever so slightly with the camera to, again, make, spice this up a little bit and make it a little more interesting, okay? So again, we're going to come into the effects, effect controls in the motion section. And we're going to set a, a keyframe, enable the keyframing, which will again, automatically set a keyframe and then uh, move over the playhead and zoom in a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to overdo it a little bit here. So maybe like this, because we're going to really close in on the eyes, which hopefully will draw the attention of the viewer to the shot. And then when we play this, boom, a much more interesting shot, right? Before it was pretty static. And now this is adding a little, I don't know, dramatic movement to the shot. Okay. So this is the zoom. We have seen how to do, how to do the pan before now the zoom. And when we want to combine this, here's another shot, an aerial shot. I think it's uh, New York city and pan and zoom. That's actually what is being referred to as the Ken Burns effect. When you combine these two and let's say we got the shot here, we uh, are editing our, short film or what would not and we want to emphasize a certain area of this of this um shot here let's say again here's this little sun flare it could be this building because our scene our movie is playing in this building i don't know or uh in this case let's see want to emphasize this area on the left hand side of the canvas okay how do we do that so uh, again same as before we come into the effect controls um, enable the keyframing for position and scale because we're going to combine both of these and move in a little bit and we want to focus on this area. So step one, let's zoom in. And now you can see it's moving out of the canvas and then move to the left a little bit, maybe even move down a little bit so it gets even closer. And now when you play that, and, and again, you want to maybe want to extend that to the whole um range of the clip and then it's it's looking as if the drone operator actually had tried to focus this area here where um the sun flare is happening which again is not happening in the actual shot but now it, it looks kind of interesting as if we had a you know you know, these inspired drones where you have two two operators, actually one is flying the drone, the other one is actually um, controlling the camera itself. And that looks much more interesting, okay? And that's actually how to com combine pan and zoom, pan and zoom to emphasize certain areas of your footage, which is going to make it look a little bit interesting. Another scenario is the tracking zoom. And the tracking zoom is good for shots like these. Let's say we have another drone shot here. We actually, again, scenario, let's imagine you have a short film, a movie, and the, ne the next scene is, that's an establishing shot, and the next scene is playing on this boat, and we actually want to close in on that, on that boat. How do we do that? But the problem is, it's actually moving out of frame, okay? So this is, uh, this is what we want to end up with, and it's starting here. So what we want to do is actually, again, um, set those keyframes with the auto keyframing. And actually we want to end up here. This shot is way too long. So let's trim this. And here, 
we want this to move actually move over and we want to track the subject here so there are other automated ways to do this but for now let's take a look at how this is being done manually so since uh, we haven't we haven't scaled this up just yet so we we actually have to scale it so we have a little more real estate here to play with and when i move this over you can see that it will basically follow this um the shot here and when we play this now it looks more like the camera just like we did in the pan and zoom the camera has actually followed the subject here and um, this could work as an establishing effect. Maybe we would have some some actors. That's probably something when when people on set are saying, "Oh, let's let's fix it in post." That could be something that you could uh, work with. Okay. Now this is the tracking zoom. When you have a moving object in your footage, you can use this technique as well. And the last one is the rotation zoom, the zoom rotation, and it's perfect for circular shapes and shots like this one here. And it's from up above the uh, the. Um, uh, the the drone was standing still, obviously, and I really doubt that this is it's way too high. I, I doubt it's being shot from a crane or something. So I'm assuming it's a very uh, it's just a static shot from a drone. And for this again, let's, uh, move the player to the to the beginning of the clip, and then enable scale and rotation. Because why would we enable scale? When I rotate this now, as you can see, it's going to reveal what's behind and there's actually nothing. It's some um, empty space, right? So we actually need to scale this a little bit so this um, so this will work. Let me reset this. So this is the base position. And then zoom all the way in. And now when you rotate, make sure that these black areas don't show up. When we extend this, this looks much better than this static shot before. These uh, techniques work particularly well with um, time-lapse uh, shots, in my opinion. It, it's, it's really nice that you have both movements at the same time, which is um, the time-lapse, as you can see, these, tra these cars with, and their lights and the traffic lights, and the additional um, zoom rotation is adding a little more um, interesting movement to the whole shot okay so the thing that i had mentioned earlier we, we did this in the effect controls under the motion tab effect controls tab under motion and sometimes uh, you want to revert back to it was before then you would hit this reset icon and then this one and no but there's keyframes and oh my god i have to clean this up i don't want to deal with all this okay so how can we do how can we do this a little more how can we work a little smarter? And that's uh, with the transform effect. Because what it does is it's actually doing what we just did, but with an effect, which then you can toggle on and off, okay? So let me explain. Here's the thing. We go to effects, we go to transform, add this uh, to, our, to our clip, and here's our transform effect. And it comes with the same controls, position, scale, rotation. So we set a, um, enable the keyframing for scale and rotation, move over, scale it up. Where is it here? Scale it up, rotate it, and guess what? It looks exactly the same, but the difference is, I'll show you in a second, it looks exactly the same, but the difference is now this. You can just toggle on and off. Um, without even touching these keyframes and resetting anything. And then maybe you change your mind. I'm like, you're like, oh, no, I don't know. You could even try different settings and just copy, copy paste this transform effect and then reverse the keyframes just to see if you like it better when it's actually zooming out. And um, don't forget to turn the first one off, of course. And then let's see what, the, what this does. And yeah, that kind of looks better. I like this better. And this is a quick, quick and easy way to actually iterate and don't even touch the original settings and keep them in case you just want to go back and start all over again. Okay. So that's the transform effect. Here's another little trick. Um, when you want to create this pan and zoom effect that I showed you earlier, quick and dirty, you want to work smarter. You have to, you know, many shots that you work with and you want to do it again, 
quick and uh, quick and dirty. Um, go to the effect controls, click on motion, and then you will see this. Uh, uh, maybe you've noticed this blue cross here, right in the middle of the of the clip on the canvas. And that's the anchor point of the clip. And what you, what you can do here, without the the auto keyframe being activated, you can actually take this anchor point, and we know that we have this sun flare coming up here on this side. And now you have set the pivot point, the anchor point, to exactly that point. And you don't even have to play with the position anymore because now when you enable the scale keyframing and move over the clip just a little bit, it will scale, if you notice, if you, it will scale from that point, okay? And then when we extend that again and play it, it's going to look exactly like it has looked, it had looked when we actually animated position and scale. That's what the anchor point does for you. And you can actually focus on a certain point without even touching the position, okay? That's another good thing. And of course, combining that with the transform effect, you have this incredible tool set to work with to creating these fake camera movements and create more compelling shots. So that's creating cinematic fake pan and zoom camera movements within Premiere Pro without any plugins. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit the like button, leave a comment. And again, if you know the history behind Canon Burns, um, help me learn, <laughs> learn more about that and, and, and put it into the comments. I'd, I'd love to hear your opinion, your thoughts. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial.